So today we're going to be talking about surgery around the mouth and it's something that we're really well versed in uh, and so we use terms that others might not explain or you might not find in other places. We'll talk about a direct excision of a nasolabial or a direct excision of a puff and you won't find other surgeons talking about that. Um, it's a course that we teach to other surgeons. Uh, so a lot of what we'll talk about today will be terminology and you'll get to understand what we're talking about. So we could even start with that. Uh, direct excision of a nasal labial is this area on a face um, where someone might have a hound dog look or really hang heavily in the jowls. Well, when you do a facelift, you can't pull things tight enough often to get that smooth uh, and have things also look normal. So we can do it in conjunction with a facelift or we can do it alone where we just remove the extra tissue directly where it's a problem. The trade-off is a scar, which is usually not very easy to see unless you're very close. Also, when we're looking at the mouth, um, we look at a couple of different features, one of them being the corner of the mouth or the length of the upper lip. So when people age, and even sometimes younger people, the corners of the mouth, this area here, turns down and looks kind of frowny or looks aged. Well, you can sometimes help that with a little bit of Botox or a little bit of filler, but often you really need to get to the point where we surgically just remove excess tissue right in the area and lift up the corner so that it shows more of the lip um, and actually doesn't look quite as sad. The next area is the length of the upper lip. As we talk about kind of the area from the bottom of the nose just to the cupid's bow, uh, a young mouth has an arch to it kind of like a bow with that Cupid, the little love angel we carry. And uh, that is youthful, it's attractive, and the distance from the nose down to that shouldn't be so long that you can't see the teeth. So we generally, when people are just talking, want to be able to see a couple millimeters of the upper teeth. And that allows us to have the, uh, the vision of a youthful and attractive mouth. If somebody has too much show, then that doesn't look good. And if you can't see the teeth at all, it generally looks old. So for that, we do an operation where we remove tissue just underneath the nose. That's the best place to hide it. Um, not at the lip itself. That leads to other problems. And that's what we teach the other surgeons when we teach these courses. So we remove the extra tissue and just trade off the little incision and the little scar underneath the nose for the, um, the lift of the lip. Now, um, that always gets into recovery and cost. So we've gotten to the point that we know that probably it's going to be better to have a lip lift or a corner mouth lift or both. And what am I going to need to do to prepare myself and how much is it going to cost? Well, individually, either one, the lip lift or the corner mouth lift, if it's done just by itself with the surgery, the anesthesia, all those things is going to come in at just over $4,000. Our pricing structure, when they're done together, the second one gets discounted, so that both together are going to come in probably at just around $6,000 uh, to do them in combination. It gets even more affordable if they're being done at the same time as other procedures, such as a facelift or a cheek lift or eyelid surgery. Um, it could be even done at the same time as other surgery on the body, someone who's having a tummy tuck or something. So that's one way for things to be more economical in taking care of them. I know that when uh, we go somewhere to purchase something, there's a great fear that you're going to be upsold or oversold uh, on what you're shopping for. Um, and you can come in with an automatic attitude of like, I'm getting just what I came in for and nothing else. Uh, and I would be guilty of that too. I'm going to go shopping for a car or uh, a suit or whatever it is, and I have it set. I am not going to let them sell me one more thing. And I understand that. And we here don't try to be salesmen. We just try to be educators. We want to educate people about what the possibilities are and then let you choose. It doesn't benefit me to sell you something you don't want because we're partners in this for quite some time. It's not like a car where they never see you again. It's not like a suit where that person's gone. We're here and we're going to be seeing you over and over and we want you to be happy every time we see you. So we want to educate you and get you only what you really want and need. Go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the Austin Weston YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest in cosmetic surgery. For more information on the Austin Weston Center, visit our website at 
austin-wesson.com or click the link in the description below.